Hey, thanks for joining me. So as of this recording, we are like four days out from the premiere of a small movie that some of you may or may not be aware it's coming out, a little independent art house film called Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, it's kind of interesting. It looks like it's going to be one of those movies that's actually going to do really well. This is an era where the Marvel movies have just started tanking hardcore, and they're not a fraction of the powerhouse that they used to be. But, uh, you know, Marvel got their hands on the Fox Studios properties and bought them all out, so now they own the X-Men and Deadpool. And um, a lot of people were concerned, myself included, that... Uh, now that Deadpool's under the control of Disney, is it going to be an R-rated kind of movie that fits the tone of the first two that we've all kind of come to uh, actually enjoy and look forward to? And it looks like it's going to be a good movie, you know. Um, I'm one of those guys, like I think like most of us, I really enjoyed Hugh Jackman's portrayal as Wolverine. And, of course, Logan was a great send-off to the character. So it is kind of risky bringing him back to play the character when he's already done like the one of the greatest kind of send-offs to a character ever but it's a multiverse tale and whatever whatever it, it it exists i'm gonna go see it it looks interesting i hope it works out but because of that and i do have a little youtube channel here i've decided to i don't know pull my head out of my ass and try and pay attention a little bit more to big significant things that are coming up and maybe try to attempt to coordinate putting up videos that are relevant to the big uh uh the the big thing that's going on like you know if there's a famous comic book issue that it's like the 30th anniversary of like x-force number one not too long ago i should throw it under the microscope on the day of that anniversary so in that kind of mindset I thought that I would do the comic book with the first in the first meeting between Deadpool and Wolverine, which is this issue right here. I'm also going to be filling up the channel with three other um, Deadpool related specific Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, I've kind of filmed these out of order, but um, I'm not sure the release order that I'm going to put them in, but I believe just before this video, the day before, you'll have seen me talk about X-Force number two, which is the second appearance of Deadpool ever. I actually don't have the issue with Deadpool's first appearance, but I did do another revisit with Deadpool uh, and his second appearance. And then I have this one that I'm going to probably put up on Friday, which will be the day of the actual release of the movie. And then over the subsequent weekend, the Saturday and Sunday following, we're going to be looking at some Liefeld Wolverine Deadpool fighting crossover comics because these are just garbage. But starting here, to start, I, I, I like the cover, the kind of the silhouette and the red. Um, that doesn't read as Deadpool to me at all. I get the design of the outfit um, and with this kind of harsh, it's not quite a silhouette, but it, it just, it doesn't read as Deadpool. Wolverine as a silhouette is pretty easy to identify. Pointy boots, pi pointy mask, tiger stripes on his ribs and claws. But at a glance, I don't know if I would have ever read that as Deadpool. I've seen this cover for years. This actually isn't my copy of this book. This is my brother, uh, John, who's got his own channel. And he's already looked at these books. I think he put these out around the time when the uh, first trailer came out. And I'm like, well, hey, since you've already done them, I want to borrow these books. And uh, I'm going to throw them up to uh, kind of coincide with the actual movie itself. So... Uh, he was kind enough to let me have these, but I've seen this cover before. I just never read it as Dare, uh, Daredevil. Jesus, Deadpool. Um, I mean, at least the mask ovals you gotta have. Have those as bright red circles or something. Just never read as Deadpool. So, I had kind of read these issues when they first come out, but I, it's been so long. If I read them, like, they're my brother's copies, and I haven't read them since so as far as the story and what's going on i don't know how much i care um i do know that this is 
one of my least favorite things that's ever happened to Wolverine. Um, well, he's had the metal ripped off his bones in this comic. This is not long after that storyline where Magneto ripped the metal off Wolverine's bones. And I'm actually kind of fine with that. The thing I hate, hate, hate are bone claws, which is what he has in this story. And we'll get into it. Um, it's just so stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me. F up until right before when Wolverine's metal got ripped out of his bones, it was always Wolverine is a mutant and his mutant powers are his heightened animalistic senses and his ability to rapidly heal. That's his mutant powers, his mutation. And so Canadian government's like, well, because you can heal rapidly, we have access to the super sensitive, or sens sensitive, this super powerful, indestructible metal. And if we could somehow graft it onto his bones, it would make him physically like so sturdy and so strong and, and able to absorb so much damage. And then the idea is that they implanted knives under his forearms that he can extend and retract. And they're razor sharp. And because there's this indestructible adamantium, it can cut through anything. So it's like, what a perfect like way to take a mutant and enhance it. In, in a way, it's almost like Mark Silvestri's Cyber Force um, over at Image Comics. You know, Cyber Force were mutants that were enhanced with technology. Well, that's what Wolverine is. He's a mutant enhanced with technology. I mean, with his claws, they put like tubes inside his arms and then the knives are you know, retracted inside the tubes and extend out that makes perfect sense but if he once they remove the metal they're like oh he's had bone claws inside his body this entire time well what did the metal cover the bone claws and so then the metal that it come out as his blades we're just covering the bone, which doesn't make sense because the metal blades were flat knives and his bones are big, round, chunky, pointy things. So then his his bone claws just stayed retracted and he never knew he had them. And no one did a scan of his body and ever saw that, hey, you've got metal claws on top of bone claws. Just the stupidest thing they've ever done. I fucking hate it. So now that I've got that rant out of the way, Wolverine here... He's showing up to check on somebody. He finds the doors kicked in. So he's like, well, there's trouble of brewing. So I guess he's pulling his mask on and then ripping his regular clothes off to reveal his Wolverine outfit on the bottom. Uh, this is drawn by Adam Kubert, who is extremely hit or miss for me. He does have kind of an exciting style that he was doing in these, um, um, these Wolverine books. Adam, right? Adam Kubert. There's Adam and Andy. I like Adam better of the two. They both have some strengths and weaknesses, but I like Adam a lot better. Andy's way more missed than hit for me. Um, his weird, but also kind of awesome use of extreme angles, like this low angle shot of the ground, kind of looking up at Wolverine there. Pretty awesome. But yeah, see, Wolverine's just ripping his clothes off, and then you flip the page, and it's a big double page spread of there's Deadpool showing up, shooting at Wolverine, who's now in full Wolverine gear. And both of these poses are just ridiculous. Like, he, what is he, jumping down the stairs with his legs flexed up like that? And then Wolverine crouched over in this ridiculous pose. And then this, like, Looney Tunes-esque, you know, it's d -d 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 Deadpool, folks. So, it's weird to think that this is the first time these characters ever met. It's in this book, but, you know, at the time, this is December of 94, so Deadpool's relatively new. You know, he'd been around in New Mutants for a minute and then X-Force, and his popularity had just taken off. So, you know, it's inevitable that these two are going to run across each other. Um, I just, there's a lot of weirdness and energy to this, but I don't really like this. It's so odd. It's too odd. Is, is this a laser blast exploding in Wolverine's hand right here? And it's so it's such weird verticals, like his hand up with the claws up this way and then down that way. Just so, you know, vertical like that. It's just weird. It's just weird. 
These Kubert boys did weird shit. But it's Deadpool and Wolverine. We're off to the races. We're fighting. I did like that Wolverine just instantly, seemingly, ripped Deadpool's guts out. Just, pfft. and so that's a pretty solid shot. Good, you know, twisting of the body, anatomy, ripping his guts out. But because um, Wolverine had recently had his metal ripped out of his body, it's taxed his healing factor to the point where it basically stopped working for a while in a way and then it's slowly getting back to where it used to be but it is not as strong as it used to be his wolverine's ability to heal and that's something that he leans on as a character in a big way he's used to just throwing himself into danger because he can take all kinds of damage and just heal up deadpool on the other hand He's got a healing ability as well, and his work's perfectly good. So, you know, Wolverine rips his guts out, and Deadpool's like, oh, by the way, um, I can heal. That doesn't really hurt me. I'm kind of fine. So then he kicks Wolverine in the face, and what a weird... I'm just trying to track what we're seeing in this panel on Deadpool. Head, sure, leg, foot... I guess this is supposed to be his nutsack right here, and then his other leg that's coming off this direction somewhere. And so it's just his body is angled to point at us. It is one of the weirdest looking angles and the weirdest shot choice. Like, I appreciate a shot of Deadpool kicking towards us and, you know, clocking Wolverine in the face with his foot, but that is so weird. It's so odd. And then Deadpool, you know, because, you know, he gets his guts ripped out, but doesn't really phase him. He just keeps going because he can heal up. Deadpool whips out his knives. Wolverine, this is a good shot of his face. Um, kind of a goof up with the color. You see how the yellow comes down from his mask the way it's supposed to be? But then the yellow curves back under his nose. That's not how that's supposed to be. It's supposed to be flesh tone on the bottom. But whatever. Some colors are goofed up. I like the blood gooing out of his teeth and his nose. But Deadpool's like, all right, let's keep going. So he goes jumping at him. Another weird, goofy angle. But this one's, I'm kind of okay with this one a little bit more than the other ones that were going on. It's, you know, you, you, I want to say like it's pushing the weird anatomical flexing of the human figure in a weird way. But hell, McFarlane and Eric Larson do that type of stuff all the time. And it works. I buy it there. So it's kind of fine. I guess Deadpool's flicking his swords around like helicopter blades. And this is a pretty awesome shot of Wolverine jumping towards us like we've seen every artist do. Whenever you do Wolverine jumping into battle, you got to do some version of this where he's leaping towards you, hands coming towards you, claws popped up. They're those stupid goddamn lame-ass bone claws. But Wolverine's charging, bone claws out, and then he decides to just switch it up and just kick Deadpool in the chin. Why not stab him in the fucking face? Like, put your claws through his eye sockets or something. Because what happens now is Deadpool's saying how he suckered Wolverine into this to, like, fool him into doing this kind of maneuver. So then Deadpool could just arch his swords back and stab Wolverine in the back, basically puncturing his lungs so Wolverine can't breathe. And it drops Wolverine to the ground. And Deadpool is aware that his healing factor is not working very well. So I appreciate from a storytelling perspective how Deadpool was smart enough to understand what was going on. Know that Wolverine's a little vulnerable. So if I do this, it'll take him out of the fight. It might kill him. Even if it doesn't kill him, it stops him and Deadpool can go about, go about his business. Which he does. So Wolverine got his ass handed to him, really. Deadpool just outthought him, but he's also, you know, in addition to being a great fighter, he's in, like, full power mode. And Wolverine is not. He's depowered. He doesn't have his adamantium skeleton, he doesn't have his claws, and he doesn't have his healing factor working at peak efficiency. So all Wolverine has is his willpower, which is formidable, but Deadpool took his ass down pretty quickly. So that's the end of that. Deadpool notices something here, which kind of gives him a direction to go for whatever the hell it is he's off to do. And then we cut over to, I remember thinking, looking at these pages, I'm like, is this still the same artist? Which I should bring up penciling duties. There's something even more interesting that has nothing to do with 
uh, Wolverine or Deadpool, which is the focus. But we've got Larry Hama on the script and Adam Kubert on pencils and also Fabio Laguna. Now, some of you, you know, for you guys who know, you see this cover, you know what it's coming up. You know what I'm talking about. Um, this name, Fabio Laguna. But if you're not aware of this guy, um, it's really shocking what happens in this book, you know, in, in a way, depending on kind of your perspective on the whole thing. Um, Mark Farmer inks and Tim Townsend. It doesn't say who did what, but I would maybe think Mark Farmer inked the pages up front by Adam Kubert and Tim Townsend, who's just one of the best inkers ever. I don't know, <coughs> excuse me, how good Tim Townsend was at this point. I assume he has to be pretty damn good. Um, but, you know, this is 94, so this is forever ago. But he becomes one of the best inkers, in my opinion, that ever graced comics. I just, I don't know how good he's in. But I wonder if Tim Townsend is inking this Fabio Laguna. We will see what's going on. But these pages, this is, I think it's Garrison Kane, that Weapon X from uh, X-Force number two, which I just looked at. And then this is Vanessa. This is the girl that was... In, um, pretending to be Domino in the early issues of X-Force and was revealed to be, you know, an imposter and the real Domino showed up. So now it's Vanessa. And then we all know her as, um, you know, the girl that plays her in the movie, uh, Morena Baccarin, you know, Inara from Firefly. This is that character. This is Vanessa. But I guess these two have had a relationship. Boy, I don't fucking know. I, did, I wasn't following these comics, but they're practicing for a a, a a play like acting i was looking at this going boy i don't know what the fuck was going on in these stories and boy would i not care to watch garrison kane and vanessa um having a little romance moment while they're acting like doing a stage rehearsal but deadpool shows up and um, that's what he was looking for because Deadpool and Vanessa got a long history. So now we cut back to Wolverine and the text is just basically saying how, you know, if it was if this had happened, a, you know, a little while ago, getting stabbed in the lungs, it probably would have killed him. But his healing factor is repairing him. It's just doing it a lot slower. Anyway, Wolverine jumps out. Got to go track down Deadpool, you know, walks his happy ass out to a car and um, stops and gets in a cab and says, take me to this place. Now, I'm sitting here. It took me a second staring at this panel trying to figure out what the hell I'm seeing. But um, it's like an inside shot of a car looking down at the floorboards where a guy's foot is slamming on the brakes of a car. That was hard to see. But this is still Kubert. It's just funny because it was not the greatest art that he's done, but it's also not the most interesting pages to draw. Now we get over to it here. Now, I think this is the part, I'm certain this is the part, where it switches over. This is that Fabio Laguna guy. Now, um, just to break it down succinctly, this Fabio Laguna guy, whoever he is, I, if, if he's ever drawn anything else besides this book, I never noticed it. I mean... If it's out there and I've seen it, I just don't recall. It's just this one. But this guy basically copied every panel from someone else, very specifically Jim Lee. And there are some that are so obvious. Like it is it is so ridiculously obvious and, and embarrassingly stupid that I wonder how the editors let this guy get away with just – not just copying Jim Lee's style, which – Tons of artists were doing. Jim Lee was the man, highest selling artist on the, or you know, the best selling artist on the highest selling issue of X Men and and the highest selling American comic ever with X Men number one. Off doing Wildcats for Image Comics, just very popular. You know, everyone wanted to emulate that style, but it's not just emulating the style; it's literally copying poses and like line for line practically this thing looks extremely familiar although i can't place where i've seen it before and these faces same thing i know i've seen these but there are some extremely obvious like i think it's 
right here. How about this? I know I've seen this shot of this girl putting an elbow to the back of the head of somebody. I think this is in Wildcats. I think that's a shot of Zealot clocking somebody down. And then this shot of her jumping through the air, I think that's another ripoff of a Zealot shot from Wildcats. But this right here, for anybody who follows Jim Lee and loves his work and loves Wildcats, I'm popping it open right here. The character of Zealot herself. It's smaller, but the same kind of gritted teeth look, the hand coming forward with the fist and the arm bent up. It's the exact same thing. Now, sure, he put different clothes on her, and this guy doesn't know how to, like, render a figure on his own. But this, at least it made sense in this pose, because Zealot's got her hand coming forward, holding a sword, and this arm back here is holding this weird boomerang weapon. This girl's just standing here with her fist in the air, and her fist coming towards you. Like, how, how does this happen? It's so ridiculous. Um, and Jim Lee's just looks so much better. I always thought this was like a great shot, especially with that hand coming forward. Such a well-drawn hand. So that's just one. But all of these are taken right from a Wildcats comic. And if you've never seen this before, but you're familiar with Jim Lee's work, this has got to be kind of shocking. Like, you're kidding me. Um, I've seen that somewhere that's a very very familiar shot from one of the x-men issues from one of the you know the relaunched x-men titles i'm sure i've seen that panel in there this shot almost exact copy there was a panel of i think it was towards the end when moira mctaggart is fleeing the x-mansion after the whole story with magneto and i think that this guy sees ghost rider goes zipping by this panel is an exact ripoff i've seen that face um, this kick looks real familiar. You can see some places where suddenly the structure loses the, um, the solidity that Jim Lee has. So you can tell that this guy's faking it. This stuff looks ridiculous. That face looks bad. So it's just all kind of terrible. And I'm just, I'm way past caring about the story. I'm not even talking about the story anymore because I'm just stuck on this artist. Um, this car, I want to say that's a Todd McFarlane ripoff because I feel like I've seen that shot, that angle. And McFarlane, when he draws cars, I remember seeing some of his cars and taxis. I feel like it's an issue of Spawn. He, he draws them very squared off and boxy. Cars are hard. You know, look at this top panel. Like, look at this weird little stupid, like, grade school kind of cartoony picture versus then this other one. But cars have, like, subtle curves and soft flowing angles. And um, I hate them. And, but just this boxy car. It looks like a McFarlane ripoff right there. But these faces are all Jim Lee ripoffs. That's another one that I've seen that shading on that face. That's a complete Jim Lee thing there. And the story is like the cab's driving along and Wolverine wants out. So he like, I guess, rips the door off. And he's literally surfing down the road on top of the door of this car. Okay. <clears throat> and then we get into more where... It looks all familiar, but I can't quite place it. This face looks awful. So I'm thinking this guy tried to replicate him, that himself. That shot right there, I know very, very well. That was a shot of Psylocke when it was in X-Men 2 or 3, when Fabian Cortez went up, and as Chris Claremont likes to do, he likes to have his characters kiss, like adversaries forcibly kiss someone else. And I guess Cortez's power is to enhance the abilities of other people. So Psylocke's like telepathy went ape shit. And so she collapsed to the ground with her telepathy just going nuts. That is that exact pose ripoff right there. Um, that one right there, a very exact ripoff of Wolverine jumping on. I think he was diving on Deathbird in one comic. In, I think it was in Uncanny X-Men. I could be wrong as far as the character he was attacking, but I know that one very well. That shot, it's just an exact line-for-line ripoff 
Um, that face looks very familiar. And it's just more of the same, more ripoff. I've seen that somewhere. That up angle shot, that's such a hard one to pull off. Um, I've seen that shot from Jim Lee. And again, I'm not talking about just like, it's kind of his style. It's like he found a panel in a comic and just tried to put it together and may, and just pass it off as his own. It's really terrible. And then this page right here, this shot of, that's Vanessa again, da, busting out um, the Wildcats. This panel and that panel right there. Like, he not only does he just copy the same drawing, but he takes the same panel, make it a big, long, skinny panel. So again, th the thing is like, it's hard to draw these things. So you're sure you're copying eyes, nose, mouth. Can you have her iris looking another direction? Because they both got it looking off the direction this way. But then he takes the same hair curving down in front of her face the way Jim Lee does here. The same little dual strands coming across her face here. And then this puff of hair coming across her chin this way on both panels like just get the structure of the face and then have the hair flowing some other way like you can't vary it up enough to even change that he even mimics the same shading and uh, you know the the highlights on the lips just a thousand times worse it's so ridiculous So I, you know, I know I've seen, I, like, I'm not, I'm not going to go on a, a, a journey to find all the ripoff places from all these things. I don't have the time for that. And I bet you there's videos out there from other people doing it. But, um, I know that shot right there I've seen, this is that weird back three quarter headshot that, uh, Jim Lee likes to do. And this face, I mean, it's just all ripping them off. So I don't know if this guy ever worked again. I don't know where he ever went, whatever happened with him, if he grew to actually be a good artist. I've just never heard of him. But Jim Lee ripoff aside, the first meeting between Wolverine and Deadpool, I got to be honest, it's really kind of a non-event. It's really not that big of a deal. But I don't think at the time they had any idea what Wolverine and Deadpool would become in terms of movie properties. I mean, who could three decades later... But this is the first, you know, first time these characters ever crossed over and met in comics. And this is it. Kind of not a big deal. But because it's a, a big movie coming out, um, we're going to look at it. And, it's you know, now this comic book has way more significance because of the movie. So that's it. Wolverine number 88 from 94, I think it was. Um, not a big deal. Not that exciting. But it is what it is. So I guess that's all I've got for now. So thanks for watching. See you next time.